Well, in the wake of the Tucson shooting that killed six people and left Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords critically injured, some lawmakers vowed to tone down the harsh rhetoric. But does saying job destroying instead of job killing really make a difference? Political image specialist Ryan Prucker joins us to discuss. Hello, Ryan. Hi, Shannon. How are you? I'm very good. All right, let's talk about this. Uh, are, are we inching towards something akin to the language police, or do you think that some people are going to self-police, as we saw that job killing title uh, this week referred to as job destroying or job crushing? You know. well, well, here's what we know. Political gamesmanship has always involved wordplay, creating terms to help someone think about an issue, tell them what you want them to think about an issue. We've seen the estate tax become the death tax, co uh, compassionate conservatism. So job killing health care was more about saying, look, this is bad for jobs, therefore it's a bad bill. But Republicans, I think we're smart to change things up a little bit, and here's why. The phrase no longer achieved the goal. In fact, it became a distraction. What they did was they changed it up, job destroying. It gets the same point across, but they're back to framing the issue, which is what they need to do. All right, what are some of the best and worst examples you've seen out there of, of using language uh, to get your point across, especially in the political realm? Yeah, I mean, uh, rhetoric has always been used to help pass bills. You look at uh, Newt Gingrich, his contract with America, that worked because it was different. People thought, okay, shared responsibility, shared goals, accountability, it's a, it's a contract after all, and, and that resonated with people. Juxtapose that with President Obama's single-payer health care, and people were like, what is that? I don't know how to think about that. It was marketed horribly, people couldn't grasp on, and therefore it never gained any traction. So rhetoric is very powerful. Well, let's talk about the fact that we've got the State of the Union address coming up on Tuesday. Uh, the president, many people by most accounts think that he did a very good job in rising to the occasion in his speech in Tucson. Uh, you know, when you have millions of people watching all around the world of uh, what you're going to say, uh, how carefully crafted does each word of that State of the Union have to be? Uh, it has to be incredibly crafted. You really have to step back and look at the environment in which you're in. You have to be pitch perfect. If anything, it's do no harm, but make sure that the words aren't counterproductive and don't detract from what you're trying to say. Language is all about being persuasive, but when you look at it politics-wise, there's always going to be people who are going to debate how it's being used and what the intent ones. They're going to be parsing it. So you have to make sure that you're on point, you're on message, you reflect the needs of what's going on in our world today, but you're also cognizant of the fact of how it could be spun by your opponent. Well, and it's very interesting. We have this example in the last couple of weeks that uh, this phrase blood libel that was very offensive to many people, mm -hmm. invoked initially by Sarah Palin. Uh, she got a ton of heat for that. And then we saw Democratic uh, representative Steve Cohen used it on the House floor. Were you surprised after all the trouble and the heat that she took that he would also bring up that same language, which he got in trouble for it as well? Absolutely. There's no excuse for it. You have to be aware of what you're saying. She was taking so much heat for it. He goes around and turns around and uses it again. And what we have to remember is whether language causes violence or not or incites violence, I don't know. That's beyond my purview. But what I do know is that words have power. Oftentimes, words can be the spark of action, both really good and really bad. I mean, you take a look at Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall, uh, I have a dream, uh, ask not what your country can do for you. Those are words that motivate people. So when you turn around and you're not thinking about what you could possibly motivate someone to do and just be a little bit more careful or when there's all this controversy, stay far away, reframe the issue, find your own voice, your own message that you think is going to connect with people. It is the absolute worst move that you can make, especially in politics. Well, words are powerful. Ryan Prucker, thank you so much for joining us to break it down. Oh, thank you so much.